podcasting from the Chicagoland area. This is Game On with Jackson Stewart, where we discuss men's lifestyle, focusing on sex, fitness, relationships, business, and more. We'll be interviewing the best of the best, the hot shots, and the rising stars in the worlds of modeling, fitness, cooking, and more. Influencers who are discussing keeping it sexy while at the top of their game. I'm your host, Jackson Stewart. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the game. This is Dale Valor. This is Pamela Ross. This is Trinesia. And you're listening. And you're listening to Game On with Jackson Stewart. To Game On with Jackson Stewart. Game On with Jackson Stewart. Killing them! Follow Game On with Jackson Stewart on YouTube at Game On with Jack, on the official blog www.gameonwithjack.blog and at the new store www.gameonwithjack.shop. Keep it sexy and game on. Good people, sexy people, welcome to another edition of Game On with Jackson Stewart. I'm your host, and I want to welcome you guys to another uh, episode. And tonight we're diving. <laughs> tonight we're diving into a topic that a lot of people grapple with, especially guys. And at some point in our lives, this topic pops up: When is it time to leave a relationship? And you know, as I phrased it so eloquently, um, <laughs> tired of her shit. Six signs it's time to go. And you know, I, obviously guys go through this, but also well, also women. And this could be for both uh, hetero or homosexual relationships. It does make a difference. Any kind of relationship, even, you know, friendships and, and work relationships and, and family relationships, not just necessarily romantic, but we're focusing on the romantic this evening. At some point, shit's just not working. And you got to know when it's time to bug out. So... Before we get into that, I want to remind you guys to follow me on all social media, follow the show, YouTube at Game Out with Jack, Patreon.com slash Game Out with Jack, Game Out with Jack blog, Twitter, same handle, and the Game Out with Jack dot shop. Uh, you know, the one stop shop for players. And I know, I know, I know I gotta add more stuff there and I totally will, but definitely make sure you stop by on those platforms. Give me likes, give me subs, we we'll totally appreciate it. So whether it's a romantic partnership, a friendship, or even a professional relationship, understanding the signs as time to move on can be a game changer. I mean, literally can just save you time, save you money, save you stress, no one to leave. So six key signs that indicate it might be time to say goodbye and move forward. And remember that our relationships are an essential part of our lives and knowing when to let go is a valuable skill. So grab a notepad, settle in, and and, uh, let's get started. Sign number one, too many red flags, all right? So all too often we dismiss early warning signs because we're hopeful, right? Or we're attached or we're too horny to think straight. (laughs) Um, But ignoring these can lead to more significant issues down the road. Red flags can include dishonesty, consistent disrespect, uh, emotional manipulation, um, you know, uh, gaslighting, uh, belittling. Also, just a constant area of, uh, or I should say, a constant presence of just chaos. You know, I remember dating a woman in college, and she just never, she just never could show up on time. She would cancel dates all the time. And one day I just said, like, look, if if you're not into it, that's cool. Just let me know. She's like, no, no, I totally like you. And then it went on for like another two or three months of just this chaos. And some people just gravitate (laughs) towards chaos more than others. Some people are attracted more than others. But it was just a sign that we weren't compatible. And so, you know, I called it, respectfully, I called it quits and we moved on. But Pay attention to your instincts when too many signs appear. Now, what's too many signs? Well, that's up to you to figure out. But I'd say a good rule of thumb is anything more than five constant red flags, it's time to go. 
all right? So your instincts are trying to protect you. So listen to them, okay? They're, they're not out to get you. They're not out to jam you up. They're not out to make you, you know, an asshole in the beginnings of a potential relationship. They're trying to keep you safe, emotionally safe. And so listen to them. It's a good time to call it quits. Um, <clears throat> sign number two of, uh, you know, putting up with their shit when too much is, <laughs> too much is, it's too much and it's time to go. Constant conflict, right? So, you know, disagreements are normal in any relationship. And, you know, you're going to find yourself not always agreeing. You're going to find yourself, um, you know, learning and growing by some of this friction, some of the static that's popping up. But this is about, you know, when it's enough of her shit, six signs, it's time to go. And when there's constant conflict is one of them. So if you find yourself in a perpetual state of, of arguing, of disagreeing, of, of button heads, of going at it with no resolution in sight. So this isn't like you guys disagree and you come to a resolution and you both compromise and you move forward. No, this is just constant headbutting about the same old, same old, or maybe new topics, but there's no change. There's no, there's no leveling up in the relationship. It might be time to reassess and time to get the hell out of there. Healthy relationships should have a balance of harmony and discord. And I don't mean the server, <laughs> but a balance of harmony and, and friction. Okay, discord, uh, disagreement. But when it tips the scales towards constant fighting, well, then it becomes emotionally draining. If it's emotionally draining, then you're going to not be at your best on, you know, any given day or any given moment. All aspects of your life will eventually suffer. You know, work, your health, finances, your other relationships, because you, you ain't got nothing left to give anybody. So it's probably time to go. So we got two signs right there. One, tons of red flags, constant issues. Second, constant conflict, always arguing, always disagreeing, always just at odds. Our third, <clears throat> excuse me, our third sign that's time to go. The relationship is unfulfilling or it's one-sided. So relationships should be mutually fulfilling where both parties contribute to each other's happiness and their well-being. Now, in the old days, people would say, oh, every relationship should be 50-50. No such thing. Most likely, relationships tend to be 60-40, 80-20. However, it should not always be the same 60-40, okay? It should not always be the same 80-20. What I mean by that is that, you know, you should not be doing 80% of the relationship all the time while he or she only does 20%. Now, there might be situations where you're better suited to do most of it, maybe like planning the dates. You're just really good at that. But there's other situations where they pick up the lion's share of the work, okay? And lion's share, if you guys have heard that term, just means they pick up the bulk of, of the activity, the tough parts. But if it's always you, then that's not good, and that's one-sided. And you might feel like you're getting fulfilled because maybe after you do everything constantly, the sex is great, or, you know, they listen to you or they smile at you or wink with, but over time, that's not going to be sustaining and you're going to burn out. If you feel like you're giving much more than you're receiving or your needs are consistently unmet, that's a big sign it's time to get the hell out of there. Because if you stay, you're going to get deeper and deeper and you're just going to see more and more of this one-sidedness and you're going to find yourself more and more exhausted drained um unfulfilled in your other relationships in your life and here's the thing with when people just constantly keep you know putting too much shit in your relationship is that it just doesn't stop affecting you 
as you communicate with them and relate to them, it's going to spread throughout all of your life. Just think about the shit in your house. If somebody dumped a big bag of shit in your house, pretty soon there won't be a room you can go where you're not going to smell it. <laughs> That's how this relationship is. If you're putting in too much and you're getting too many issues back, you're not getting fulfillment back, you're getting too much strife back, that shitty smell is going to creep through every aspect of who you are. All right? So... Think of it not just for your own well-being, but also for the people that care about you, for the job that needs you, etc. Sign number four, stagnation. So relationships should inspire growth, not hinder it. You should be better off because you're with this person, not worse. If you find that you or your partner are stuck in the same pattern, is doing the same thing, having the same conversations without any progress or personal development, that's a time to step back and look at this relationship and see if it's holding you back from leveling up. And I'd say stagnation might be the, it's probably the least malicious of all the signs because sometimes people just don't, you know, iron sharpens iron. Sometimes people don't elevate one another. Right. Sometimes people get together and don't push each other to become better, to grow, uh, to pursue new dreams and or old dreams and, and old ideas to to take a chance with their career or with some project or, or a new hobby. Sometimes people just don't do that to each other. Is that malicious? No. Is it bad? It ain't good. So that's why this one's tough to just kind of go, eh, you know what, this ain't working. We, we got to we gotta break up. We got to stop talking because everything else could be great. But stagnation, you know, uh, leads to rot, you know, and rot, you know, that decay. And because you're just stuck doing the same thing all the time. And you're not, you're not fanning the flames of passion in one another. And if you guys start to lead and live dispassionate existences, <laughs> excuse me, eventually that lack of passion, that lack of fire is going to creep out into your relationship, your physical relationship, your sex life, how you guys talk to each other, looking forward to seeing one another. And pretty soon, if you got rot, you're going to have resentment. So you really look at stagnation. It's really dangerous, but it's deceptive because it's not like so much in your face like some of the other signs. Sign number five, um, emotional and physical well-being. All right, so if a relationship consistently affects your mental health negatively or 100%, this one's important. If it poses a threat to your physical well-being, it's a clear sign it's time to leave. All right, no relationship, no relationship is worth sacrificing your health and safety. So, you know, if this person you're with is emotionally abusive, if they're physically abusive, you got to get out of there. And if you think they're not, listen to the people around you. <laughs> Excuse me. There are people around you who are probably saying things like, um, you know, this person is not good for you. This person is gaslighting you. This person is belittling you. This person's controlling. And the physical is just clear. Like, why are you getting bruised? Why, you know, why are you, um, and obviously I mean, if they're hitting you, but sometimes physical well-being can be impacted by, you know, let's say you're, you're eating healthier, but they're not respecting that. They're always putting like fast food in front of your face or, Maybe they're, they're shaming you, so they're physically impacting how you eat or how you work out or whatever. Emotional and physical well-being is so important that if the relationship is pulling at those aspects in a bad way, in a negative way, if you're worse off emotionally and physically with this person than without, you got to get the hell out of there. You might have a blind eye to it because you have emotions with this person and you have a history with this person. Listen to your damn friends. Your friends might be like, hey, man, this girl ain't no good for you. This guy ain't no good for you. You know, since you've been with them, you gained weight, you lost weight, you're always sick, you know, you're down, you're anxious, you know, why are you with them? They, they separate you from us. You can't have a good time. Listen to the people. 
and you have to listen to all your friends, but you got friends that, that have your well-being at heart. Sometimes you got to listen to them over yourself because you're in it and you might not have a clear mind to think about things. Lastly, sign number six. I know it's kind of a shorter show today, but, you know, this is one of those topics. It's, it's, it don't take a lot to talk about it because it's very clear. Sign number six, values and goals are misaligned. All right. So the misalignment of your values and goals stems from so many things. The way you were raised, what you guys have as a priority, what you think is important. And as we evolve, our, our values and life goals may change. If you and your partner no longer share common values or have drastically different life aspirations, it can be challenging to try and keep this relationship healthy and fulfilling. And, you know, there may come a point when you have to think, we got to go our separate ways, especially before you go deeper into your relationship, especially before you start to uh, give up certain aspects of who you are to make them happy. Like, let's say you want to travel the world and this person's more of a homebody. Well, you can always compromise, but you don't want to give up who you are. You don't want to give up your dreams and your goals. And so, you know, maybe, maybe they learn to go with you. They may not enjoy it as much, but it's important for you. So they do it or vice versa. And that's where you guys got to look at, you know, how much is doing something you don't want to do? weight against how important is it to the person that wants to do it and is your ability to just suck it up and enjoy it for them not less of an effort yeah is it less of an effort for you to enjoy it than it is for them to give it up and vice versa you know and so you, you gotta look at that and put it in your values too especially when it comes to things like your finances or fidelity or communication, if they don't care about, you know, being monogamous, and you do, well, that's a problem. If you don't want to be monogamous, and they do, that's a problem. Um, and you want to get these things hashed out before you do things like, well, let's let's get let's move in together. Well, if your money ideas are different, if your if your housing ideas are different, you want to be in an apartment for a year, then get a house, and they don't care if they're in a condo forever. These are things that you got to work out. And sometimes you just can't come to a point of compromise and you may have to call it quits. And you want to quit when it's easier before you get in deeper and quitting is disastrous and shatters a bunch of lives. So guys, there you go. You got it. Six signs that it might be time to leave a relationship. Um, you tired to put up with her shit. <laughs> <laughs> and her shit could be too many red flags, constant conflict. Um, she's unfulfilling or one-sided. They brought stagnation into the relationship. They are a threat to your emotional and physical well-being. Their values and goals are not lined up with yours. These are six signs that time to go. It may not be easy, but it's probably the right thing to do. Keep in mind that um, recognizing these signs isn't a failure. It's a sign of self-awareness and self-care. And it's not, I mean, look, people change. And the longer people are together, the more they really show who they are. And sometimes they don't even know who they are until the relationship kind of boils away years and years of, you know, how they've been raised and, and who they've been wearing as a mask, so to speak. And now they're a person in a relationship with somebody else and, and thing, raw things come out. Every relationship, remember this, teaches us valuable lessons. And sometimes even the lesson that relationships ultimately can end. So the decision to leave a relationship is a deeply personal one. You should make it with care and consideration. If you're going to do this, seek support from friends and family or a therapist if you're navigating you know, this difficult choice. Don't do it alone. Um, even sometimes good people aren't good together and it, it's not a knock. It doesn't mean you suck or they suck. It just didn't work, but don't go it alone. Um, even if it's a, you know, amicable break, you still hurt. You still have put in time with this person. It's still going to affect you. 
reach out to people who care about you and uh, and lean on them in, in this time. All right. Remember, guys, life is a game and it's essential to surround yourself with relationships that uplift you, support you and help you level up. So, guys, thanks for tuning in to Game Out with Jackson Stewart. If you found this help, if you found this episode helpful, sometimes I can't talk. Please subscribe, share it with someone who might need to hear it. Connect with me on social media for more thought-provoking content. Until next time, game. Until next time, <laughs> keep it sexy and game on.